Hey, today we're going to inspect binaries. When you program in C, your compiler takes your .c file and it produces a binary executable. Sometimes as programmers, we treat these binary executables as black boxes, as, as mythical, magical things, and we just, uh, we just don't want to look inside. But today we're going to. Because executables are not magic, they are just binary files that have a particular format. And sometimes it's super useful to be able to actually look and see what's inside a binary. Maybe you have a binary but no source. Maybe you want to verify that your compiler really is doing what you think it's doing. Maybe you want to see where the compiler's putting your variables that you declared. And maybe you want to see how much memory you're taking up with your globals and your code. Whatever the reason, today I want to show you a few different ways that you can mess with binaries to get information and to actually change program behaviors. So let's start with a simple example. This is basically just hello world with a few modifications. I added a global variable, I changed what it prints out, and I added this if statement. It's going to check the program's first argument, and it's going to tell us if it matches a preset password. So we're going to compile it with debug symbols, and now we have the executable that we want to inspect. Let's take a look. Again, this file is just a binary file with a known format. You're not going to want to open it in a text file because you've got unprintable characters in there. So it's, that's not going to be helpful, but we can open it in a hex editor. If you've never seen hex editors, they're super useful for looking at binary files. I made a previous video about hex editors. I'll link to that in the description. But now you can see what the contents are. Now what you're going to see here is going to depend on the hardware platform you're compiling for, what compiler you're using, and what compiler flags you used. I'm using Linux, I'm using Clang, well you saw what flags, I just have the one, I just have dash G. The format that Linux uses is called ELF. And now this file still isn't superhuman readable. If you had the ELF format documentation in front of you, you could easily figure out what each of these bytes means. I don't have time to make a 60 minute video today, so we're not going to do that. But as is, there are a few quick things we can do. Okay, so first of all, you're going to notice by looking in here that there are some readable text strings. And so let's see what we can do with those. So if you come down here, uh, yeah, so you can see down here there's the strings I used in my program. Specifically right here is the password that I stored. You know, it also it's stored right next to the other static strings that I use in the program. Now, if we want, we can, of course, get that password. It's just sitting right there. And we can also change that password to something of our own choosing. So for simplicity, I'm going to pick one that's the same size as the original so I don't have to worry about updating the section headers. And now I can save the file and I can run it without recompiling. So I didn't rerun my compiler. And now look, it responds to my new password. Now that's kind of fun. A secondary purpose of this video is I hope that now you will never hard code passwords in your programs, especially in plain text, unless you don't mind somebody grabbing those passwords. And this is the most basic method to mess with binaries. You just open them, just like any other file, and read information out of them. But of course, this is a little complicated. This isn't the most simple or straightforward, so let me show you a couple other things that you can use. Now, the tools I'm going to show you today are all part of the GNU bin utils collection. They're pretty much available anywhere where you have GCC and Clang. You should also have these utilities. So the first is strings. Now, strings is going to go through and basically do what we just did manually with a hex editor, and it goes through a binary and it extracts all of the printable strings. And so if all you want to do is grab strings from an executable, or really any binary format, then this is an easy way to get them. It just basically goes in and pulls out the strings. So if we want a bit more structured information, we can use read elf to actually look at the symbol table. Now, the, so these are all the different symbols that are defined inside this file. So these are like the different names that are used, different identifiers. And there's a lot of information here that you can see. So this symbol table is going to give you things like, it's going to tell you what type of symbol it is. Is it a function? Is it an object? Uh, is it a section? You know, basically a logical section within the program. It's going to tell you what its address is. It's going to tell you how big it is if it has a size. So this is for functions and objects, they're going to have a particular size. And it's also going to give you some information about how it's scoped. So if you look in here, you can see some of the identifiers that uh, that were from our program. So you can see main, for example, you can see the global variable I set. You can also see there's a, this function is really important called start. You might think main is where your program starts running, but it's not. It actually starts running in start. Start does a bunch of setup and, and then it actually calls main. Okay, so we can get the same kind of information using object dump. So we can use object dump dash T that gets the symbol table. And this is basically giving us the same information, slightly different, it still gives addresses, it still gives sizes. It, it now gives us the section name, so like dot text, you know, that's where code goes. So, you know, this may be helpful, but, but basically these are just two different ways to get the same information. Okay, so we've seen sections in here a little bit. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like. If I use object dump dash S instead of dash T, now I'm going to see the different sections that are involved. And here you can actually see this is actually the binary executable code. This is the binary data for each section. E each of these sections has a different purpose. The ones that are usually most relevant are 
the text segment. That's where most of your code goes. You're also gonna find the RO data segment, which has all of your static strings. Basically, it's read-only data. This is data that's never gonna be updated or changed. Also down here at the bottom, you're gonna see a bunch of debug information. And this is basically just so that when you use GDB or something, it, it knows what the names of functions are and it can actually help you keep track of line numbers and things like that. So that's all just for debugging, it's not actually necessarily part of the execution of the program. And looking at binary data might not be all that helpful. So we can actually disassemble it using dash D and now we can actually see the assembly code for each of these sections. And now it's actually starting to look like something we might be able to use. So if you look down here, you can see start, Sure enough, it does call, well, it calls libc main, which in the end libc will then call main. If we scroll down further, then you can see main down here and all the great things that it does. And so this is another way that you can look at your code and actually see what it's doing. And this is where if you think you found a compiler bug, you think the compiler's doing something weird, or you think there's an optimization that's behaving in a way that you didn't expect, you can always disassemble and actually see what's going on in the generated code. Super handy. We can also look at individual segments. Now you've seen in here, you see, you'll see segments and you'll see sections. Now one way to think about it is that segments are segments of memory. These are actually blocks of memory that are gonna be loaded at the time that the program runs. Sections are logical sub pieces. And so you can see down here that multiple sections get mapped to a particular segment. Now a final tool I wanna to tell you about is strip. The strip function actually removes symbols from your binaries. Now this is really common for two reasons. One, you may wanna make your binary smaller. So when people ship binaries, often you want to make your binaries small. Smaller binaries mean smaller downloads. The other reason is that you may want to make it a little bit more difficult for people to reverse engineer your code. You may not want people to be able to open up your code in GDB and actually track through all the details of how it executes. I mean, they can still get at the assembly, they can still disassemble it. But strip makes smaller executables by removing the debug information. If we look at the symbol table now, you're going to notice there's not very many symbols in there. So now if you look at the different sections and you look at the code that's in them, you're gonna notice that the debug ones are now missing from the bottom, they just removed. So even though I compiled with dash G, strip basically reversed that process, removed all those debug symbols. So that's something that can come in handy when you're trying to release code or trying to shrink the size of a binary. Now these aren't the only binary utilities that you have available. These are just a few that I think are particularly useful. These aren't tools that you're gonna use every day as a programmer, but when they come in handy, it's really nice to know that they're there. I may be able to cover some of the other binary utilities in a future video, but for now, I wish you a very good day.